He is present indeed. I'm Sally Dick. And I'm Ken Herman, and we'll be your worship leaders this morning. Welcome to this Easter Sunday worship. If you're worshiping online with us, there's a link uh, to the bulletin on the church website. Please sign in uh, a few registration books. They're usually on that side. Pass them along, and when you're done, pass them back so you can see who's sitting in the pew with you. Um, prayer cards are also in the pew racks, and uh, they're there for sharing joys and concerns. They go in the basket that's there on the communion rail, um, and also they could be emailed to the church office, that's office at NapaMethodist.org, and those will be shared with the prayer group. This morning we especially welcome children and their families in worship with us. The Sierra Service Project Fundraising Barbecue and God's House Band Concert are next Saturday at 6 p.m. Come for food, music, and to support our youth missioners. United Women in Faith invite everyone to a fundraising tea for Gum Moon Women's Residence and Asian Women's Resource Center on April 13 at 1 p.m. Established in San Francisco in 1868, Gum Moon provided shelter, education, and vocational training for Chinese girls rescued from human trafficking. Yeah, I know. He literally slapped me in the face. That was all the way When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. I am Salome, follower of Jesus, and yes, this is the morning of my story, for light is dawning and hope is resurrected. It was time to go tend to him. We had waited waited, waited in the agonizing depth of Sabbath-keeping stillness, bearing our grief like black cloaks. I'd shut out the light of day between the moment of death and this moment of moving back out into the world that seems so cruelly violent to us now. I'd snuffed out my lamp, vowing to light it no more, 
so that my heart did not have to see the future lurking before me. But it was time. Tending to his body would perhaps help me find comfort in the darkness, there in the tomb with the memory of him, even in his lifeless body. I knew how to tend to the dead. I would let my movements carry me into a future I was afraid I could not face. And so I did light the lamp in the early morning, just before dawn, and we made our way. My biggest concern was getting into the tomb, finding someone this early to help us roll the stone to let us in. But there we were, at the tomb, and the stone had already been moved. Someone had moved it before us. When? In the midst of the Sabbath? Must have been the Romans. Did they move his body? And then the light poured onto us as we entered the tomb. Cool, white, amazing light pouring from the corner from a figure there already completely spooked. I jumped out of my skin at first and then was overwhelmed with the beautiful brilliance of this light poured onto my skin, my clothes, my face, into my very soul. And then the light became a voice, a message, a miracle, a moment I can never, ever forget. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I am Mary, Jesus' friend. The burial oil is needed no more. We rejoice with the oil of gladness. I am Simon Peter, and the waters of death are now the waters of new birth. I am Judas. The wine shared for the last time is now new wine in new wineskins. I am Jesus' mother, Mary. Tears of sorrow have become tears of joy. Come one and all to rejoice this day, for no matter who you are, this is your day of resurrection. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn. beginning of our trek into the dark woods, we looked at Peter's missteps as an example for us. Even toward the end, Peter fails to keep his promise to his beloved Jesus, denying any association with him three times when the going got rough. But again, it is this utter failure that will guide and strengthen him for what came next. Upon this sinking rock, the church was built and expanded to include others considering other or unworthy. The story of all those who surrounded Jesus parallels our own failures, fears, and missteps. Where do we go from here? We journey into fullness, continuing to embrace the gifts of the dark wood where the Spirit beckons us into extraordinary life. Even though you might not feel this morning like your dark wood journey is over, the faith narrative assures us that the light and life of Christ is always with you.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Holy living God, we share in the light of your glory through your Son, the light of the world. Make this new fire holy and inflame us with new hope. Enliven us by this Easter celebration and bring us one day to the feast of eternal light. We pray now that this light present in the direction of your church. We pray now in this silence for the transformation of lives, especially those who walk through the dark wood of uncertainty, fear, emptiness, temptation, loneliness, illness, economic hardship, prejudice, and hatred. Each week in Lent, we observed a few moments of silence to ponder the gifts of the dark wood. On this Easter day, may our silence be of wonder and joy at the mysteries of God's love. Awaken us, O God, to your light on the path for others. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. Please join as we sing together, Christ the Lord is risen today.
dawn, you're going to turn out the lights, right? <laughs> you know, we can always get the message right. Hi. So, um, in, in a perfect world, all the lights would have gone out and we'd be here in the dark. So we're imagining that it's dark, and let's walk over here, being really careful that we're watching the cord, we're not walking into, the, into anything, okay? So we're walking up here. Oh wait, wrong one, wrong one. So come on, it's okay. It's okay, really. So every week in Lent, this, this time leading up to Easter, we've been walking through the dark wood. So can you see a path? If you move over this way a little bit, Alyssa, then, then everybody can come up the stairs. Can you see the path that goes through the dark wood? Okay, Riley pointed it out. It's, it's got pebbles and, okay. And do you see a little bit of light in the sky now? There is a lot more light now. There wasn't any light. Come on over here so you can see it. Come this way. So there's more light. Is, there, is Bill here? Is Bill Archambault here? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, hi, Bill. So Bill is the artist who created the dark wood for us. And every week it's been a little bit, it's been a little bit lighter. So I'm wondering if we... Would we be comfortable walking into the dark wood? Now there's a little bit more light. Could we do that? Or, I'm not afraid. Are you afraid? Okay. I, what if we hold hands and we walk through the dark wood? Well, okay. So we heard a story that Mary and, and Jesus' friend Salome came to the tomb and it was dark. It was pitch dark. Okay. And they couldn't figure out why. So come here, and I'm going to tell you the rest of this story. It's the secret. I don't want anyone else to know. Come on. Come on, Adele. Come on. Open that door. Go on. Open the door and go out. Open the door. Go on, go on, turn around. Go. Hi, Kai, hi, Bimba. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Easter is a mystery. Our children are in worship with us today. Usually when they leave, we say, we love you, we're blessed that you're here. We're gonna say that to them, even they're staying with us. So come on back so that we can tell you. We love you. And we're
Christ is risen. He is risen Good job. <laughs> Today we're telling the Easter story in words and songs and flowers and drums and piano and organ. This is too big a story to, um, for words alone. And, and anyway, sometimes words get in the way and sometimes words divide us. The Easter story is for all people throughout all ages. It's the story that God's love will not let us go. We all let go of people because they move away or they change or we change or they die. We let go of people because we have to. But God's love never lets us go and that's a story a lot of us have never heard or if we've heard it, we haven't believed it. Some of the story that Ken and Sally and Lois and uh, Riley and Ellie and Todd read was taken from Mark's gospel. The word gospel means good news, but sometimes we use that word as a way of saying, this is the only truth. Each of the gospel writers though, Mark, Matthew, Luke, John, they all tell their Easter story a little differently. And each one of us who encounters Jesus the walking, talking heart of God, well, we tell our story a little differently too. This is one of the Easter stories from a paraphrase called The Message. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so they could embalm Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning as the sun rose, they went to the tomb. They worried out loud to each other, who will roll away the stone from the tomb for us? and they looked up and it had been rolled back. It was a huge stone and they walked right in. They saw a young person, an angel, sitting on the right side dressed in white. They were completely taken aback, astonished. That person or angel said, don't be afraid, I know you're here looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, the one they nailed to a cross. He's been raised up, he's here no longer. You can see for yourselves that the place is empty. Now go on your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there exactly as he said. They got out of there as fast as they could. Beside themselves, their heads swimming, stunned, they said nothing to anyone. That first Easter story sounds different than our celebration. It's been told so long and so often that it's lost some of that fear and shock and wonder of the women who went to the tomb to prepare Jesus' dead body and saw that he was gone and were told that he had risen from the dead. All the gospel writers tell us, preach it, all the gospel writers, it, I, you know what, if you have a child in here and they're making noise, that's just joyful noise to us, so, you know, yeah, okay. Gospel, all the gospel writers tell us that all of those who saw and heard the good news that Christ had risen from the dead were bewildered and frightened. It was too weird, it was too otherworldly to accept. I refer to Jesus as the walking, talking heart of God, but there were people at that time who had massive amounts of power, and they saw Jesus as a threat, an outlaw, a troublemaker who needed to be silenced. Love is a harder message to hear than hate. War is an easier thing to make than reconciliation. Easy answers are more palatable than hard truth. Jesus made a lot of enemies preaching about love and reconciliation and truth. Two of his closest friends, Simon Peter and Ju Judas, betrayed him. One of them pretended that he had never even heard of Jesus, and the other one sold Jesus to the Roman authorities. Interestingly, they both showed up in the Easter story today. Riley Anderson was Simon Peter, and Ken Ehrman was Judas, and they spoke with joy about the waters of new birth and wine and new wineskins. They spoke as if they were still friends of Jesus. The Easter story turns upside down the idea and our fear that we are beyond forgiveness or outside the reach of God's love. The Easter story tells us that nothing can separate us from God, from God's love, 
That kind of overflowing love has to go somewhere, doesn't it? I mean, you can't just be filled and spilling over with love and not do something about it or you'd explode. <laughs> you have to share that unfathomable, inexhaustible love in tangible ways like forgiveness and mercy and justice and kindness and patience. Resurrection is not a noun, it's a verb. Resurrection happens in us as well as it happened in Jesus. God raised Jesus from the dead and raises us to new and fuller life. We are now part of the Easter story. All through Lent, we've had this transformational art on the chancel to remind us of the gifts of the dark wood. And I want to acknowledge here, just for one more minute, that Bill Archambault is the artist who created this. And Bill, it has been an amazing journey for us as the light has come up in this picture. It's changed every week. And we are so grateful for your gifts, your time, and your willingness to help us. Thank you. Each week as we've moved closer to Easter, there's been more light, more illumination on this journey through the dark wood of emptiness and uncertainty and overwhelm and being lost and not fitting in. The dark wood has been a metaphor for these experiences that we have in common with all other human beings. And one of the gifts we discover in the dark wood is compassion for others. And another has been companionship. We are truly all just walking each other home through the dark wood. Another gift has been finding Jesus in the dark wood with us. Nothing can separate us from God. So what's next? Have we emerged from the dark wood or will we find that the, the doorway to the dark wood is always open, inviting us to experience curiosity and resilience and faith and new life and to recognize that God is always and everywhere with us. I personally cannot not sustain all of the feelings of Resurrection Sunday, the joy, the wonder, the fear, uh, which is why I observe Easter Monday as a holiday. I feel um, by Sunday night that I have absorbed all the joy and the music and the flowers and the chocolate bunnies that my heart and soul can take. <laughs> and I need Easter Monday to take it in, to sit with it and to find myself in the Easter story. Now you might not have tomorrow off to go to the beach, which is what I usually do, but tomorrow is as sacred a day as today is. We have again heard the Easter story and perhaps we've found ourselves a part of it, bewildered, stunned, even frightened that God's love is so accessible and so powerful. Easter happened today and it will happen tomorrow and every day because God has defined for us the limits of God's love. Nothing, nothing, not even death can separate us from God. Oh, Riley and Todd, I need you again. Are you ready? You ready? Okay. Okay, you gotta turn it the right way up. You gotta turn it around. Turn it around. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Amen. I invite our new members to join me up here, and I'd invite Keith Kalara and Barbara Barrett to come as well. You guys rock. Would you go put that down? Yes, you can stay. Here, you can hold this, okay? Okay? Now this is a participatory liturgy, so we're gonna ask you to follow along. You'll see that there are places in the program where Keith and I will speak to the new members, and we will speak to you, so you kinda have to follow along so that we're all welcoming and doing this wonderful welcoming together. And we have one name that isn't on the bulletin and that is Mo Worry. Mo is right here at the end. So on behalf of the whole church, dear new members, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness 
Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, races, gender identity, sexual orientation, and other abilities? Will you all nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these new members before you in your care? And this is for us all. As members of this United Methodist congregation, will you faithfully participate in our ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Will you strive to follow Jesus, thrive in community, and heal the world? With God's help, we will. Members of the household of God, I commend these new members to your love and care. Do all, of you, uh, do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. With God's help, we will. Amen. Barbara, do you want to give the... because he put it on baby time. Yay. <laughs> Keith is beginning a, a new study on United Methodist Spirituality. Come on, choir, it's okay. Uh, on United Methodist Spirituality for our new member class. And if you're interested in that, please see Keith. Thank you. You can sit down or sing with the choir, whichever you like. <laughs> Good job, guys. Easter word. And, um, and traditionally during Lent, the word Alleluia isn't spoken. It's not sung. And so four years ago, uh, on the first Sunday of Lent, we had balloons all over the sanctuary that had Alleluia written on them. We had a big packing box and the children and I got all of the balloons and we put them in the packing box. And I said, we're putting them all away until Easter. And then on Easter Sunday, we had the same packing box, but different balloons. <laughs> and they had helium in them. And so we opened, and they also said, Alleluia, and we opened the box, and what did they do? They all rose up in the air, and, and there are still two of them, or three of them right there. Alleluia is an Easter word. So if you are blessed to be here today in this company, say Alleluia. Alleluia. If you are here with multiple generations of your family, say Alleluia. Alleluia. If you have reason to believe that resurrection will happen tomorrow and the next day and every day after, say Alleluia. Alleluia. So we have a couple of joys today. One of them is that 
If you look at the flower insert in the program, you'll see that many of these flowers were given in honor or memory of someone. And if they were given in memory of you, take a flower home, choose a flower and take it home. And if you purchased a flower in memory or of honor or honor of someone, take that and give it to someone else, maybe visit someone. Okay, so that's um, one of our prayer joys. And the other one is that um, we are praying that whoever has the van key that opens both the back door and the gas tank will show up with it. <laughs> Loving and wonderful God for the joy of being together. For the peace in our hearts, we give you thanks. It's always appropriate to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you have called us to be your own and that in fact, O oh God, you have called the world to be your own and so the world belongs to you. Your love is unfathomable, Lord. It is inexhaustible. And today you remind us that you live with us, you live in us, and that we are walking with you. Whatever the dark wood of life brings to us, you are there. And so we will be open, Lord, to curiosity and wonder and hope and belief, even in the midst of the hard times. So we pray together now a Celtic Lord's Prayer, prayer that Jesus has taught his closest friends. Ground of all being, mother of life, father of the universe, your name is sacred beyond speaking. May we know your presence May we, your longings be our longings in heart and in action. May there be food for the human family today and for the whole earth community. Forgive us as the wellness of what we have done as we forgive those who are untrue to us. Do not forsake us in our time of conflict, but lead us into new beginnings for the light of life, the vitality of life, and the glory of life are yours, now and forever. Amen.
our liturgy there, there was a, a, there was a call to worship. And I want to share a few lines from it because I think it applies very nicely for this part of the service. See if you can pick out which part applies. But nevertheless, all of these things are a mystery and a miracle, and when they happen to us, it's a blessing. Where shattered hearts are made whole, where wounded souls are healed, where life is stronger than death, where the lonely become our friends, where a stranger is welcomed home, where hope is stronger than despair, where closed wallets are open. <laughs> where the anxious find serenity, where love is stronger than hate, there is Christ in our midst. So even in the hope of any or all of those things happening to you on this Easter day and beyond, be generous and reach out to the world beyond you in the light of Christ. Will the ushers please come forward?
So this is going to be interesting because we're going to read and bring at the same time, right? Okay. So when uh, I dismiss your story as an idle tale, what will you be? Into the world. 